87 is another psalm of the sons of Korah, and like other psalms of the sons of Korah, it's all about Zion. This is a, a song for pilgrimage. The Jewish people made several pilgrimages to Jerusalem during the year. There were three major agricultural and religious festivals, Passover, Pentecost, and Tabernacles. And if possible, each person, each family would make this journey to Jerusalem in order to worship at the festival. And it's likely that this was one of those festival songs. It's classified as a song of Zion or longing for Zion. And I also classify it as a missionary psalm because it portrays in perhaps the most dramatic of, of all missionary psalms, uh, this idea of God's desire for all nations to know him and to worship him. And so you recall the other missionary psalms that I have noted in the same regard as uh, having this particular focus on the nations knowing God and experiencing the blessings of the knowledge of God. Uh, Psalms 47, clap your hands, all ye nations, shout to God with cries of joy, assemble as the people of the God of Abraham, you kings of the earth. Uh, Psalm 67, this great missionary prayer of blessing that the ways of God would be known to the ends of the earth and that all peoples would worship him. And then Psalm 87, of course, that uh, nations would be able to say, I was born in Zion, and we'll see what that means here in a minute. Uh, but note that significance that 47, 67, 87 are these three great missionary psalms. So I classify it as both a song of Zion and a missionary song. The psalmist begins with a very beautiful description of the city. The holy mount stands the city that God founded. He loves the gates of Zion more than all the dwelling places of Jerusalem. Glorious things are spoken, O city of God. It's uh, reminiscent of Psalms 46 and 48. 46 describing a city with a river uh, that is God himself flowing through it and being the fortress to that city and to the people. Psalm 48 describing Jerusalem as lofty, as beautiful, as the most beautiful place on the earth. And so this psalm of the sons of Korah echoes that same type of language that elevates Zion to uh, the supreme location in the heart of the worshiper. But in verse 4, the speaker changes to God himself. Among those who know me, this is God speaking, I mention Rahab and Babylon. Uh, Rahab is one of the poetic names for Egypt. So not to be confused with, uh, with Rahab the prostitute in, uh, uh, in Joshua, uh, but uh, a poetic name for Egypt. We see this uh, elsewhere in the Psalm, Psalm 89 in particular. Uh, also, Rahab is a uh, poetic name for a sea monster. So sometimes Egypt was monstrous, but that's not the accent here. Uh, this is saying that even those from Egypt will acknowledge the Lord and will be able to say, I was born in Zion. So there's Egypt to the south and to the west and a perpetual enemy and sometimes ally of Israel. Babylon to the east, always an enemy of Israel. And then to the, the near west, to the west coast of the land, was the, the Philistines, perpetual enemies of Israel. And then Tyre, trading partners to the north, Babylon. And then Cush, that is uh, Nubia, or modern-day Ethiopia, so south of Egypt. So uh, some great empires, great civilizations of the day are all mentioned there by name. And three times the psalmist will say, or actually God will say, this one was born there, this one and that one were born in her, and this one was born there. Uh, I find it fascinating that it's stated three times that the people are, are sort of pointing to the other peoples of the world, other nationalities, other cultures, and they're saying this one and that one, they're born in Zion. They are part of the kingdom of God as well. They are God's people just as we are. And that's pretty astounding because the nation of Israel, of course, had a pretty strong national identity, and to this day, uh, the Jewish people have a very strong identity, uh, certain uh, practices, diet, culture that, uh, that makes them somewhat close to outsiders, and yet this psalm says, no, that it's possible for people of all nations to become insiders, uh, to join this universal kingdom. In verse 6, there's a reference to book, and of course this is a metaphor, but I think it's, it's quite fascinating. It says, the Lord records 
as he registers the people. This one was born there. So it sounds like God has a book of peoples, a book of of cultures, of nations by name. And one by one, he writes in that book as those nations and individuals in those nations come to know the Lord and be born again. Of course, Jesus will will introduce that term to us in John 3. You must be born again. You must have a new identity, a new beginning, a uh, new DNA. And uh, that idea was planted here way back by the sons of Korah in this psalm. Uh, note there are many of the other books in heaven's library. The book of record of transgressions, uh, David prays in Psalm 51, blot out my transgressions. Psalm 56, 8 mentions tears. You record my tears. You keep them in a bottle. Uh, the living, uh, the, blot them out from the, the book of life of the living people, Psalm 69. David will say in Psalm 139, yeah, all the days of my life are written in your book before one of them came to be, a record of all of our deeds. Daniel 12, 1 will speak of a book that lists those people who are delivered. Luke 10 says, rejoice, your name's written in heaven. Revelation 20 references the book of life, and then a book of deeds will be judged according to what was written in that book. And here we have in Psalm 87, 6, the register of the people. So lots of books in heaven's library, and one of them is this listing of every nation, language, tribe, and tongue. And as each one of those is brought into the kingdom of God through the proclamation of the gospel and through the active work of missionaries around the world, God writes in his book, ah, now this one, now this tribe, now this people, they are born in Zion. They take their place alongside everyone else who is born into the kingdom of God. The psalmist concludes with this statement of joy. Singers, dancers alike say, all my springs are in you, or all my fountains are in you. Again, recall Psalm 46, which says there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. There is no, there's no river in Jerusalem. There is a little spring, the Gihon Spring. Uh, and so we're probably again talking about God as the source, God as life, uh, God as water, and uh, the celebration of singing and dancing uh, at the festival. So festival song, pilgrimage song, and uh, this one highlighting the fact that there are people of all nations that are coming on pilgrimage as well. Jesus shows how this is being fulfilled, was being fulfilled in his ministry. You know, it was said that uh, that there were he found greater faith at times outside of Israel than within it. One of those cases was when he healed the centurion's servant. And Jesus said at that time, I tell you, many will come from east and west and recline at the table with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. Ah, he's picturing what the psalmist said in Psalm 87, the fulfillment of this. And Jesus begins to usher in that age when he heals the servant that belonged to the centurion. And the centurion said, I I trust you. You don't need to come lay hands on him. You don't need to do anything. Just say the word and he'll be healed. What great faith. Jesus recognized that in the centurion, and the kingdom of God then would be extended well beyond the Jewish nation into every nation, language, tongue, and tribe. What a beautiful picture of the kingdom of God and all of her glory and diversity and joy, celebrating God as the source of life and our identity as being born 